Hello everyone and welcome to the first 2018 Q&A. And you're probably saying, that says spring. Yes, good job, uh, you can read. You might be a little confused if you missed uh, the June 1st vlog, but that's okay, I won't make you go watch it, I'll explain here, because I've conveniently made our first question, why are Q&As seasonal now? From everyone. Although probably not everyone needs to ask this question, I'm sure some of you at least know. Um, Q&As are seasonal because of some changes we have made on Steven Vlog in 2018. Uh, the biggest one is that vlogs are current again, while also simultaneously being behind. We have two timelines now. The new timeline, where all the current stuff is uploaded, and the old timeline, where we're slowly catching up to the point where this new timeline started. Um, now because of that, Q&As would have been kind of weird. Yeah because they're supposed to come out at the beginning of the month. And when we didn't release one for January, people were like, uh, wait, what? Why is there not a January Q&A? But now, you know, people are realizing, oh, they're doing a timeline split. So the reason it's difficult is like, how could we do it? If we did, if, if, if for June, right? Mm -hmm. we, we go current on June and we release a June Q&A and then a a January Q&A yeah. and then a July and a February like the questions wouldn't work so yeah. where would we pull questions from where would you know where to ask them for the next one so things worked for mail mm -hmm. mail I was like okay mail can just stay the same but Q&A's I was like oh that's gonna be confusing so we'll just change it um, and there, we've already got so much other stuff on our plate we decided we just make them seasonal and seasonal is really just like a name um, it just is a way for us to do four this year instead of twelve and um, we're, we're just gonna do spring first and then sometime later you'll get summer sometime after that fall and then winter and there's not gonna be like a set time for these to release just one day you might be browsing Stephen Vlog and be like oh hey there's Q&A now um, that's gonna be how it's gonna go in 2018 but we're still pulling your questions from the last Q&A which was December 2017 and we will be pulling your questions from this Q&A for the summer Q&A whenever it may come out so hopefully that answers yeah. that question. I think it's pretty, pretty thorough. Basically, it's the same. You're just getting, you're just getting eight less, and that probably won't matter so much in the future. But we'll talk about that later. Now, for a real question. This question is coming from Michelle Art. Uh, during the vlog end screen, you advertise Let's Plays and paintings from that date, and not your current stuff. Why? I thought that this was a cool question to include, especially now that vlogs are current because people may have wondered that, but then also now it means less because yeah. with the current stuff... It's current. It's current. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know what this question is referring to, if you if you watch until the very end of any vlog, there's an end screen that comes up and it advertises uh, our store and Patreon and Steven Plays and Malmix. And on Steven Plays and Malmix, it shows little clips from projects. But I've always made those projects current as of the date that the vlog was recorded. And Misha Art brings up a pretty good point, like, wouldn't it be far more beneficial to advertise the stuff that you're working on now? The answer is, oh, yes, absolutely, definitely. Um, it would have made far more sense to, you know, show one of Mallory's current paintings that's, like, on sale, you know, that's being bid on actively. Mm -hmm. The reason I didn't is because of, like, not to get too off track here, but it's like a personal philosophy type thing, where, not to criticize any other YouTubers, but there's a, a mentality within YouTube to work on like the here and now. Like there's not a longevity type thing for most YouTubers. It's like create a viral content. What's what's trending right this second? Do this thing now. And I don't really have that. Like there's I just kind of I just kind of do my thing. And if it happens to line up with something that's popular, cool. If not, don't care. Um, and I have this idea, especially on the vlog, it's been going on for years and years, that um, there's a sense of uh, longevity where I want these these projects to be enjoyed, you know, essentially forever. People can go back and watch the journey forever, and it makes more sense to advertise what was going on right then, then. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. And even if that meant not advertising like current Let's Plays and current paintings, I was okay with it because it was like, no, this is this is how I want this to be preserved. I want it to be preserved like this, as if it was this moment in time. 
and that was what I was trying to do. The good news is that now that vlogs are caught up, you'll notice that there's two end screens. So it will, it basically continues to, to stay current. It's just on the current vlogs, you're getting stuff that's new because it is new. Mm -hmm. But whenever I release stuff from January and February, you're going to notice that it's old Let's Plays and it's old paintings. And uh, that's okay. That's okay. It's just a vision that I have for how things should be, you know, and I know that it's, it's not, it's not the YouTube way, but n very little of what I've done has been like the YouTube way. And I'm like, eh, it's fine. I'll survive. Uh, next question. This one's for you, Mal. This, from, uh, this is from Kendall Hendricks. Mal, how did you balance starting Mal makes while still teaching? So jump back in time. January 2016. Yes. I mean, technically, like, November 2015 is when me and you were, like, really discussing it. Mm -hmm. Started buying the equipment, bought the GH4, which we're recording on. But January 2016 was when Malmix started. You had just gotten back from, from Christmas break. So, like, you were getting back into teaching yeah. and simultaneously juggling starting a new project that was basically also a full-time job. Yeah. How did you do it? Looking back, I have no idea. I don't, and... I, no, I, I understand. There was a point, um, and it's when Lindsay came to visit, which was March, February? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I summer... Was, I had three paintings ahead on the walls. Yeah. And, like, looking back, I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> How did I do that? Yeah. No, uh, this is actually... it's it's This is a good question, because this is something that um, Mao and I have actually discussed mm -hmm. because we can't figure it out um I, I i don't want to be like matt was clearly more productive back then because it's not entirely true i think it, it was a combination of a few factors for one um you were i hate to be like you weren't as good but you weren't yeah I've improved you have improved it takes me longer now that i work better yes mao is um mao is now better at what she does she is spending more time doing things that she would have, I don't want to say hurried over, but just had, didn't yeah, have the skill to do. Yeah, but also like difficult techniques that take longer. Mao spends more time on stuff. But also, the, the other side of that, besides skill, is a mental thought process towards it because you don't even realize it because it's not like a conscious thing. It's subconscious that whenever you are working on a painting, when you also have a full-time job teaching, right? Mm -hmm. You're coming home in the evenings and there is a subconscious mentality of like, I have got to get this done. Yeah. And now that you don't have that because it is your full-time job, it, it, I don't want to say it's more carefree, but it, like you don't feel as pressured. Yeah. You know, that pressure is, is relieved a little bit where you know if you need to take a break, you can take a break. Mm -hmm. you know, I can spend time fixing things or yes, yeah, really working on something. And the this is evidenced by the fact, I mean, probably more on the skill level, but like this is evidenced by the fact of how much time is that goes into these paintings. Mm -hmm. um, it's inflated greatly. Uh, if you look at the the painting time for the first few Malmakes videos, it's not that long, like less than 10 hours on a lot of Mal's early paintings. And that's insanely low now. Like Mal is averaging like at least like 30 hours on paintings. And now it's starting to balloon closer to like between 35 and 40, like on an average. That's just for the painting. That's before it gets into the computer and yeah. things start to get edited. That's just painting time. Um, so when you consider that sort of thing, like something changed. <laughs> For what it's worth, I do wish that it could be a little more balanced between the two because Mao is in is often now in in a similar situation where she's having a hard time getting everything done, and this is her full time job. You know, like this is the only thing she's working on, and it's still difficult for her to get stuff done. And I think it's because <laughs> I don't want to be like you care too much, but like you are, you're putting so much time into individual pieces that it's actually getting hard to balance everything. Yeah. And you'll get better. Yeah. Because you continue to get better. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, that's a great question. And the answer is is truly like we don't know. <laughs> we don't know. I, I, looking back, it, it does make Mal seem like a magician. Yeah. Because it was it was crazy, but she was also spending far far less time. On those pieces. I'm not saying like your Wind Waker piece isn't beautiful, 
I'm just saying you compare it to some of the stuff you're doing now and it's like, oh, well, yeah, <laughs> that might be why it's only taking like a third of the time. Um, yeah, you're getting better. Thanks. Every, all the time. Our next question is from Siraj182. And this ties into the previous question. It's been two years, as of May 2018, since Mao resigned. How is your mental health now, and how does it compare to back then? Um, I'd say it's definitely better. <laughs> I would hope. <laughs> um, I mean, I think it's something that changed me, like just personality-wise. Like being in the being in the teaching profession changed you. Yeah. Okay. Just. I don't know, there's little things I notice sometimes, I'm like, oh. It make you, it made you, like, hardened? Maybe, yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, I think that's a pretty fair assessment. Um, speak, I am not going to speak for you, but, like, from my perception of things, you seem better. Like, yeah. you seem happier and more of what I would call yourself. Yeah. Your old self. Because I felt like before, like, I was just trying to survive day-to-day -day, like emotionally get myself through things it was depressing <laughs> is that's the word you're looking for that's the word that like people don't like to say right for a variety of reasons yeah but it it was yeah it was it was depressing um and yeah, Mal was, Mal was not in a, a great spot and there were there were shining little glimmers of things that were good obviously not everything's gonna be bad but um you know, when when the bad outweighs the good, that's when you gotta like reassess. That's ultimately what led to Mal makes in the first place. Is you know we gotta get Mal out. <laughs> and when the bad outweighs the, I think that's just a really good thing to remember for whatever. Life. Yeah, whatever you're going through personally, <laughs> like there you're always gonna have hardships, right? You can't give up at every time something bad happens. Um, but if if you're seeing a repeated thing where like the bad is outweighing the good and it's not changing like you have to change your situation because it's going to destroy you from the inside out so that's that's the life tip for today um you know keep that in mind if you're going through something rough like uh you know if you're in a, like a bad job or something like that you know may, maybe even like write it down pros and cons and be like are these changing is it always bad is the bad always outweighing the good like how long has this been going on because if the bad is continually outweighing the good you should get out of there yeah. as fast as you can um but yeah you you seem you seem better and i'm not going to say that things are perfect now because yeah. they're not um i mean they're still they're stressful in a different way exactly and that weighs on me sometimes yeah it's it's in your experience, I think the other thing that, that people forget is like two years ago when Mal started doing, when Mal, two, it was two years ago that you resigned. Mm -hmm. So it was two years ago that you were at home full time. Yes. And at that point, two years ago, I had already been doing this for like however many years, five years. Mm -hmm. So I'm starting with five years experience of being home, the, the idea of like, oh, I'm going to wake up and do my own thing, get things done. Mal is coming at it from zero years experience so you've had to adjust yes so this the, you have actually you know not only have you have had two years getting out of school and like having doing mal makes and stuff but you have to consider the fact that you have two years now of experience working from home which is a completely different ball field ball field game ball game ball field works too but yeah like how have you adjusted to that because that's wildly different I don't know. It just kind of happens. Like, is there any? Has there been any particular thing that seems difficult related to working from home? That um, I kind of miss having like a really set schedule. Like, you need to be here at seven thirty. Yeah. I kind of miss that because now I can be like, uh, yeah, I can have uh, well, that, coffee and, and sit a little longer. Yeah, and that ties in a little bit to you know like working on stuff and being able to step away is that mm -hmm. you know you don't have that boom, I gotta get this done or everything is going to fall apart. Um, although it's still, it, it, many times it still feels like that around here. Um, we're, we're very adamant about sticking to our schedules that we've set mm -hmm. as far as releases. So sometimes things get that way around here regardless. But Yeah, deadlines. Yeah, deadlines. De deadlines, you think deadlines are bad. Wait until you set them for yourself. Um, then they're, they're arguably worse. Uh, next question is from Weren't Zero. How do you track Sagan and Kepler's weights? 
and weren't asked this question because we had showed on a vlog in the past that we were tracking the cat's weights with we fit because we fit actually has a mode where it'll keep track of the cat's weights um that when we showed that we had only apparently done that like a few times that that's not been a long-term thing mm -hmm. we've continued to track the weights but we just use the scale we use a regular scale and do the math ourselves and then um there's an app that i use that's free called um what is it called pet weight and i can just put in the cat's weight and keep track of it and it gives me a little graph so we try to do that we try to do that once a week so like once a week we'll you know pick up the cats weigh ourselves put the cats down weigh ourselves do the subtraction put the the, the, number, in the, the number into the app mm -hmm. and then over time you can see and make sure that the things are going well with the cats um i would urge all pet parents to do that um even just like once a month yeah i mean just just so you're getting some sort of data so you know what how your animal's doing in terms of weight especially if they're struggling with weight and you're trying to do like weight loss or something like that then that's a really good tool because um you can keep track and make sure that they're having progression or if something's going wrong etc um, I've, I've needed to keep track of it closely in the past whenever uh, we've altered their food because that's a big thing is you know they need a very set amount of calories and sometimes it's hard to figure out what those calories are but then you can look at the day then be like okay things are going pretty good yeah I should remove a few more kibbles you know they should get one less treat but things are going good um, yeah but that pet way that Mal really likes. Mm -hmm. But you could, I mean, you could theoretically just keep track of that with a note on your phone yeah. or something. Uh, next question is from Argus the Colossus. And it is, what shaped you into cat people? So, how did we become cat people? I was always a cat person. Like You came out of the womb and you said, give me that cat. I never had a cat growing up when I was real young. Mm-hmm. And um, I wanted one so bad. All my stuffed animals were cats. Um, you, like I didn't you, have a blanket. I didn't have a teddy bear. Can you place why? No. So you don't. You just became no. fixated with cats at an early age, and you yes. didn't even have one. Yes. Do Did, you remember those cats that purred? They had real big heads, and like you kind of moved them, and there was like a marble in their head that rolled around, and it sounds nothing like a cat purring, but that was supposed to be what it was. I mean, no, but I also, I, had, like, I, I just had a real eyes. cat. <laughs> yeah, you had a real cat. Um, yeah, I had like five of those. And like, whenever we went somewhere, like, um, field trips to a farm or like, cause it was Wisconsin and I had friends who lived on farms mm -hmm. and there'd be like barn cats and like, I would find a cat and I would be holding it. And like, my parents would come find me and they'd be like, put that cat down. We're not taking it home. But you... I'm just, I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out like where that came. Like, did I, you have a relative or something where you I saw mean, a cat regularly? My Aunt something? Mary had a cat, um, Noid. He had like, he was polydactyl, he had extra toes. Mm -hmm. And um, he wasn't very nice. He was kind of old and curmudgeonly. But like, no one else had cats. Hmm. I just really wanted a cat and I asked for it every year for like Christmas and my birthday. I was like, I want a cat. So you were destined to have a cat. Mm -hmm. Speaking of... Cappy. And come up here. Come here. He's like, but what are you guys doing? Here you go. Come here. Come on. You, what is he doing? What are you doing? He's like on his back feet with his front paws on the futon, just kind of walking along. There he goes. Hi, bud. We're at the cat question, so this is a good time for you to join us. You want, you want to lay down? Hi. All right. Bye. <laughs> good boy. Um... Yeah, that's that's wild to me that you just had no like experience with cats and just cats. You like if I had a choice in school, like on art projects, mm -hmm. like when we got to make clay animals or anything, mine was a cat. Um, My room was cats. <laughs> for me, I just I grew up with a cat. Um, everyone is for the well, everyone's familiar now with Sagan and Kepler. Um, before Sagan and Kepler, if you've been watching the vlogs for a while, you may remember Rocco who is still at my parents' house. We see him every, everyone, well, I mean, we see him a lot, but we film him, he's on the vlog now yeah. a lot less than he used to be, obviously. Um, but uh, we got Rocco in 2006, and he was not my first cat. Um, we got Rocco about a year after 
my other cat had passed. Um, and my other cat was Mittens, and Mittens passed in um, February 2005, and she was just about 20 years old. She was nearly 20 years old. She was like 19 and a half. And uh, that's pretty old for a cat. But that also means I was, I was like almost 16 when she passed, so she was older than me. She was like three years old by the time I even came around. So from the time I was born, there was always a cat in the house. There was, there was Mittens. Um, my, uh, my, my parents, I can't say my parents were cat people. They're, they're just, they're animal people. My, my parents love animals. My mom has had, um, dogs and dogs cats, and, cats. Mm -hmm. and my dad grew up on a farm, so he had dogs and cats. And, uh, after they got married, um, they decided that they wanted to get a cat. So they got, um, they got a cat named Mittens. And Mittens, you know, was just, I, I grew up with the cat, so I loved cats. And uh, I've never, I've never disliked dogs, but um, I think I prefer cats. I don't know. It's, there's a lot of different reasons for that, but I think it's important to note that like preferring a cat does not make me dislike dogs. I still yeah. love dogs. I think dogs are really cool, but you know, given the the choice between them, and especially knowing like how our lives are, yeah, like a. Like a, a cat fits our a lives cat better. cat fits our lives way better mm -hmm. than than a dog and the necessity for taking the dog out and yeah. doing things with the dog. Mm -hmm. Cats are very independent animals and as much as I love to interact with these guys, um, I also know that they're totally cool on their own. You know, they might go off and just do their thing and um, that might be that. Yeah. Oh, Sagan came to say hi too. Hi, Sags. They also play with each other, which is really great. Yeah. Sometimes to their detriment. <laughs> Sometimes sometimes you hear a squeal from across the house and you know that someone is biting somebody and you're like, okay, stop. But uh, for the most part, they get along really well. But uh, yeah, I, you know, that I, I am a cat person because my, my parents were cat people. Although I do, I do feel personally that, I don't know, my demeanor or whatever, like more closely aligns with a cat, like yeah. a cat person, if that makes any sense. But, uh, I mean, it, sometime in the far off future, if our lives were less crazy and we had the space for it, would we get a dog? I mean, that's not out of the question. You know, dogs are yeah. cool. Probably have both. Yeah. Because I still really like cats. Oh, Sagan came up too. Hi, buddy. So now we got both. Hi. Of course we have the cats for the cat questions. Hi, butthole. How are you? Would you like his face yeah. towards you? <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> um, next question is from Kill Frisky. Which is, it's funny because we had two cat questions and then this person's name is Kill Frisky. Uh, Mal, how did you combat homesickness during your first couple of months living with Steven? Um, so as a quick reminder, people haven't been watching all that long. Um, we, <laughs> I'm gonna start way back, but do it quickly. Um, we met uh, online mm -hmm. on Starman.net, not a dating site. But maybe this uh, in 2008. Yes. Um, no. Seven. Yeah, we like we met and started talking in 2007. We started dating online in 2008. We were in a long distance relationship where we would see each other only a few times a year um, up until 2011, where we both graduated college, got married, and then moved to Columbia. Moved to Columbia, South Carolina, uh, because Mal got a job opportunity there. So. Um, once we did that, yes. you were in the South, and you're yeah. from Wisconsin. Yeah. So how did you combat that homesickness? Um, well, I think a few things contributed. Like, I had it for sure, and I still get it, like, every so often. Sure. Um, but, like, going away to college was kind of like a step. And then I was mm -hmm. down here two whole summers before we got married. Yeah. So that was like another step, was like being away the whole summer when I would normally be at home. Yeah. And then, um, I don't know, when we moved to Columbia, it was kind of like just a new place, you and me, mm -hmm. fending for ourselves. Mm. I mean, so you, you feel like it's just a gradual process. Yeah, like, it happened, I would get homesick and like, I'd call home and say hi or FaceTime or whatever, or when it, I could visit, but... So you, you you didn't really have a specific way to combat it, you yeah. just... Time and time. just, I guess my circumstances made it... 
Well, so my take on this, mm -hmm. right? Um, homesickness is obviously a very real thing. I'd never got it in college. A lot of people, I, that's like a common thing. Um, I wasn't far from, I was like four hours from home. Um, maybe that's why I didn't get it. Sorry, mom and dad, if you're watching. Um, I just, just, I never got homesick in college at all. Uh, I went to college and I was like, wee, this is great. Um, but it's, it's a very real thing for a lot of people, especially if you're far, far away. Um, if you are, once you get past the point of driving, right, mm -hmm. and you're a plane ride away, then everything feels even further because then it's an, a huge expense yeah. to, to return back home. So homesickness is a very real thing, but in most cases, and especially in this case, I think you have to, to really ask yourself, where is home? What is more important? What do you feel more strongly connected to? like your your home where your family was or like this person that you're with and it's not that you have to you know necessarily like choose right it's not that you're shunning yeah. your family for the rest of your life but you know if you truly feel close to this person you know it's going to take some time but eventually home is just going to be with them wherever they are and you can always go back home you know you can always go back to where your family was um, and, and see them or call them or interact with them um, but over time, I feel like that gets easier because home isn't necessarily where I grew up. Home is the person I'm spending time with. That makes sense, right? Yeah. And I think you'd agree. Mm -hmm. um, because it's gotten easier to deal with. Yes. And I, I know you said you still get bouts of it because, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's easier to to swallow now. Yeah. So that's my advice. And, and this person had asked this, this uh, question because they were in a similar situation where they were feeling homesick because they were with their significant other now and they mm -hmm. were really far from their family. And I mean, it's one of those things like, it's it's just, it's gonna take time. Do everything in your power to, you know, stay in communication with your family. But, you know, also understand that if, if you're going to build this new life together and it's gonna be away from, you know, where your family was, you know, you have to want that. You know, is, is the connection that you have with your significant other stronger and or do you want it to be stronger than it was with your your family so good luck is is the the best thing i can say good luck and work towards it and you can always go home and visit you can always make a phone call and and, and you know communicate with your family so don't feel like that's gone it's just gonna yeah. just gonna take time mm -hmm. basically um next question is from retro remedies Steven, do you think you'd still be a workaholic if you had a different career path? I'm going to let you answer this question. Yes, because I feel like whatever you would pick for your career, you would be very passionate about. And so you would work real hard no matter what you did. I don't feel like you would settle for something you weren't passionate about. I mean, I was going to say that, basically. Um... Yeah, I, 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 and to answer it even further, and I think Mal would agree with this um, once I say it, uh, I think that I get some of my very passionate, like, workaholic nature uh, from my family, from, specifically from my mom. Uh, my mom is, like, a very, like, dedicated, uh, you know, hard worker, stays focused on, on things like that. And uh, I've seen that kind of drive and passion throughout my entire life, seeing her, you know, do all of these different things. And I feel like in many ways, like I've learned that from like just watching her, but then also like, if that can be hereditary, then I'm, I'm probably getting that from my family as well. Um, but Mal's, Mal's right. I mean, I, um, whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to work at it hard, but also I would not, I, I could not put myself in a position where I, I think I wasn't happy with what I was doing. Understandably, everyone's got to work, you know, at some point doing something that they are not super excited about, right? But I would be, I, I would I would just not stop trying to get out of whatever that situation was. And it, it would just be about joy for me. Like I have to, I have to enjoy what I'm doing. And it doesn't matter if I, if I never, uh, get rich. It doesn't matter about this that, or the other as long as I can Do if, as long as I can wake up and and do something that I truly love and if I wasn't in that position Then I would be working doubly hard to get out of that position basically 
which is what you said, you know, yeah. to be passionate about something. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I guess. I, I think I would be a workaholic no matter what, um, but if it was something I didn't, like, truly enjoy, I think I'd still be a hard worker, but I would be also working to try and get to something I enjoyed. That that would be my my thing. Mm -hmm. um, and the final question for this Q&A is from Bloops64. How do you prefer your tea and coffee? Both cold. Iced. Really? Yeah. I would rather have cold coffee than hot coffee. And tea kind of varies depending on what type of tea it is. That's what I was... I mean, I knew the coffee, but like tea, really? And just, just because of sweet tea. Yeah. Also, like, I don't know. I'm not a super fan of hot drinks. Uh, so I prefer... Okay, so for, if we're going to talk about like cold versus hot, I would prefer my tea cold because... You only... I grew up in South Carolina. We had sweet tea for like... I don't want to be like, we had sweet tea for every meal, but like... It was like milk in Wisconsin. Yeah, like that's what you drink. Mm -hmm. that's, that's that's what you drink. You go to a restaurant and everyone serves it. Half of the people in the, at any given restaurant, if they're from the area, they're drinking it. Um, and depending on where you go, if it's a real country, southern place, there's jugs of it on the table. So you, that's what you drink. So yeah, cold, cold tea for me, although I very much enjoy hot tea. Um, growing up, my mom my mom uh, always drank hot tea, and I, I enjoy a cup of hot black tea. Um, and as for coffee, hot. I can drink it cold, and I've only gotten to that point because of Mao. Like, when we started dating, I did not drink cold coffee, and it was disgusting. And over the years, I have adjusted and tried it whenever Mao gets it, and I've gotten to the point where I can drink it. And on and on occasions, it's blasphemous. I've actually ordered it, like myself. Um, I I do enjoy the cold brew coffee. Uh, Starbucks has it. There's another Duncan, has Duncan it. now has it. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'd rather get it at Duncan because it's Starbucks. It's insanely overpriced, along with everything else that Starbucks sells. Um, but, uh, I do, I do enjoy cold brew coffee. Um, but I always drink, I drink everything black. Uh, I drink my tea black, I drink my coffee black. You... I drink my tea black, um, and I normally have, like, an herbal tea. I'm not a fan of black tea, unless it's, like, chai. Spiced. I like green tea a lot. Um, but for my coffee, like... Sugar. A lot of sugar and, like, a little bit of cream. Sugar. Very little cream. She starts with the sugar, and then she adds coffee and cream to the sugar. There's a line from a Beastie Boys song that says, I like my sugar with coffee and cream. And that's that's how I've I... gotten better. That's how I feel. <laughs> Mallory enjoys her coffee. She has gotten better, because I've, I've told her, I've been like, that's... Like, if I watch her actually make coffee in the morning, I, I'm always like, oh my god, because it's just... And I'm like, um, but she has gotten better. She's trying to use so much sugar. It's how you stay so I'm sweet. actually measuring and actively using less all um, the time. I, uh, I will, I will drink coffee occasionally with sugar and cream. Um, never at home for whatever reason. But like, if we're out of the restaurant, sometimes I'll put coffee and cream or uh, sugar and cream in it. Coffee and cream in it. I'll put sugar? coffee in. I'll put coffee in my coffee. Um, but at home just black you know if I go over to my parents house and I have coffee just black uh, black coffee and uh, I think I I think I prefer it that way the only time I put coffee and cream uh, see I don't, even, I don't even use sugar anytime I put sugar and cream like if I'm out it's just because I want something sweet like with my meal I'll do that um, but yeah cold brew coffee good mm -hmm. cold brew coffee is good. good the 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 problem the problem I have with iced coffees is that it takes all of the, the preconceptions of how much sugar is acceptable in a cup of coffee and it flips it on its head. Because people order these iced coffees and it's just sugar. Well, I don't get the, like, frappuccino stuff. It doesn't matter. I just get but iced coffee, like it coffee with ice. It doesn't matter. Even if you go to Dunkin' Donuts and you say, just give me a normal iced coffee with cream and sugar, that thing is a roller coaster ride of sweet. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, that's just the way iced coffee is perceived, I guess, in the States is it's sugar 
And that's the reason I like, I don't I mean, really like it. I mean, you drink cold brew black. Yeah. I've had, on more than one occasion, I've had a barista Question. say, are you sure? <laughs> like, I'll, I'll be like, I'll take a cold, uh, a cold brew and they'll say, how do you like that? I'll say black and they'll go, are you sure? You want some room for cream and sugar? And you're like, no. I'm like, no. <laughs> are you sure? It is. It's mouse tried it. It's a bit much. Yeah, it's a lot for you, but you get you get used to it, and it's it's not it's refreshing. Mm -hmm. Not in the same way like like Sprite is refreshing, but refreshing in like a like a guy dragging you into the back alley, punching you in the face, refreshing. Oh, it's, so refreshing. Yeah, so re that's really yeah. That analogy doesn't work with that word, but I think you still understand what I'm saying. Um, on t I I like tea though. I, I do. I drink um, black tea is my favorite, but I also drink green, white, red. Whatever, like they're all they're all good. I don't really care much for chai tea, but it's because you generally make it with like milk and stuff. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Have you had the chai from Concentrate I make? Maybe. Like the homemade where I throw all the spices in it. I think I did once, and it okay. was and it was like it was good, but like eh, I don't, I'm not a big fan of putting uh, milk in in tea. in tea, and um, like it's okay, but I I don't normally do that. The only time I had to do that consistently, or I didn't have to, but I did it because it was like the, the thing. The thing was when we were in Ireland. Mm -hmm. When we were in Ireland, okay, so Ireland, and then also like I guess by extension the UK and probably Scotland or Wales or whatever. Um, all of those uh, countries like put a huge emphasis on breakfast, which means they're my kind of people, and um, like you have a cup of coffee and a cup of tea at breakfast, and it's like what you do is you put sugar in. Um, milk. milk in your tea. So I did that when I was there for however seven to ten days, um, and it was different. But when I got back home, I was like, "Oh, just normal again. It's fine." Anyway, um, that's it. That's it. That's it. Uh, here's your chance, folks. Uh, it's going to be a while before you get your next Q and A. I don't know exactly how long, but the next one will be the summer Q and A. So you know, go wild. Um, come up with some questions. Ask them down below. Later on, if you think of another question, you're like, oh, that's kind of cool too. Come back and ask it, because it's going to be a while before we get around to this. I'm hoping to get a, um, like a big sizable amount of questions for us to, uh, to answer. Yeah. I would like that. I think it'd be fun. So uh, take your time, write stuff, and uh, at some point in the unknown future, you'll, you'll get another Q&A. Like, I, like norm, I, I mean, normally they're scheduled, but this is one of those situations where I don't actually know when the next one's coming out. But it won't be like forever. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be this summer. You know, yeah. August. At the latest. At the latest. Yeah, something, yeah, something like that. In a few months. <laughs> See you guys for the next one. <laughs>